there, welcome to Lucy Warriors Network. My name is Gerald Tabura, I'm happy to be here. We're having this conversation on her new channel. She decided to start this one because she wants to talk about the elderly and the discrimination that is there in the society currently. Lucy, how are you? How are you doing today? I'm good, thank you, Kabira. What is the motivation for this channel? Because for someone who has lived in the United States, someone who has been with Uhuru, you got the HSC award, and now you want to speak to the elderly. Why so? Actually, mine is a long story. I've been around and uh, I've like, you know my profile, I've done so many things around Kenya yeah. and around other countries in the world. Mm. And uh, like I said, I lived in the US for several years where I went to school and worked also mm. as a nurse. I, my first degree is in nursing and uh, psychology. Okay. And I uh, also have a diploma from, I lived in the US almost 20 years. Mm. And uh, I worked there and it, mostly I was working with the geriatrics, mm. the elderly. And having lived there, there are so many things. The system was working on and the elderly are really recognized there and they have a place there. Mm. If you see, like if you go to the Senate in the US, most senators there, after retirement after, after 65 after retirement. we have some we have some i think the oldest is 95 there and he is there the senator yes the young people are busy building their lives mm. and uh, the elderly are really respected if you go to the supermarket the prices they have a card mm. it's like the military they like half the pri they are given half the price of the items in the supermarket okay. they are really respected mm. and the government also has programs for them like they have uh, even living assisted living homes which are done by the government like the elder do not have to worry much if they have children or not like and like here we have been depending according to our culture and our children and families to take care of us when we're elderly mm. so i have that experience about the elderly the re some of the reasons why i did get started so when I lived there back in 2013, I came back to the country and I thought I would be more useful in my country. I would give more back to the country. I thought Kenya needed me more than the U.S. You know, when, when you say about the Senate, it's really stri striking me because here in Kenya, when you're old, guys say you are too old to rule, you're too old to govern, you're too old to buy. Is this something that was in your mind when you look at how young people, and especially 30s, 20s, some even 40s, calling out on those who are in their 70s and 80s. This is something that was hitting you out. Actually, I did. Because I thought if someone like is elderly, you've been through school, you have a lot of experience, you have, you have spent even a lot of government's money to be in school and earn all the experience, then immediately you are 50, wakati umekoma. That is the time now you hear and go home and rot. That's the time that your knowledge, your wisdom will not be used. It's unfortunate. Again, comparing to the West, you find that even people like Nyumbakumi, you find the people who are used to work there, they are the ex-police, ex-military people with security experience. Mm -hmm. But as here, we ignore them. You even employ, hire people who have no experience of anything. Mm -hmm. Like the teachers here who should be the ones who are giving, like being in the advisory teams, like in the counties, people who have been teachers who have done it before and they have seen what was working those days, they are never even involved. Mm -hmm. So I thought the elderly have a huge role to play. So when I came back to the country in 2013, I thought I would be more useful, like I'm telling you. And I saw there are some policies. We need to push policies that can help those elderly, even the youth. There are many policies we can change in our country as lawmakers. I thought I would make a, a good lawmaker. Yeah, you, were, you were vying somewhere. Yes, oh. I vied in Isiolo North Isiolo. Constituency, yeah. yes, as a member of parliament. And... Uh, it didn't work for the first time, for the second time, for the third time. But God's timing, God's timing, we know. It's Maybe true. Maybe some other time it will happen. But we've talked about policies and legislation and something you'd like to see happen. What is one thing that you want to see happen in our current government, if not now, then yesterday? What do you think should, have, should be done to help the elderly in our country, first by the government? 
The elderly in Kenya are going through a lot of challenges and actually it's throughout the world, only that they stand differently according to the countries. But in our country, they have a lot of challenges, they have medical issues, they have no food, some of them are homeless, others are so lonely as you grow, the house is left, the children are grown, then you are left being so lonely. Uh, we found them on the streets begging and... Uh, as I transfers the whole country during campaigns in my constituency or my county, and the whole country actually, because I've campaigned in the whole country even for my party. So I realized a lot of elderly, the aging and the people who are retired are really, truly suffering. And there's no one who is mentioning this. So that is how I came up thinking like, you know what? We need a platform. We need to be candid about this. We need to discuss because actually aging starts as from the day you were born. You oh, may really? think you are young, but you're still aging. Oh. Aging. Yes, you're aging. I never thought of it that way. So everyone is aging, but we everyone don't say is it. aging. But so, how do you prepare? You are being aged. How is the government preparing for us? How is the society preparing for us? How is your family preparing for that? So we need to talk about these things. I'm not saying that we be the West countries, but we can do it in our own way. But make sure that our elderly and the aging and the retired are comfortable, or advise them in advance. There are things maybe if you know today you do it different and your life will be different later. This is Lucy Moria's network. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe now. We have this conversation. But Lucy, what would you tell someone who would say the elderly are suffering because they did not plan for their future? The elderly are homeless, some of them, because they did not plan, they did not work hard enough. So why should we be the ones taking care of them? What would you tell a young guy saying that? I don't think our elderly are failed or they are the way they are. Some of the things, it's not them. Even our systems have the way our systems work. You can imagine what startled me, and maybe you can correct me, is about uh, the NHIF. Okay. The NHIF is for Medicare here in Kenya for people who are working for the government. Mm. And uh, for your information, the people who are working somewhere, the elderly who have ever worked somewhere, they're like 20% in this country. 80% is those who have never worked, but they have been building this country in one or the other. Then if you are a mother, your housewife, somewhere, you are still building the country. You are helping. So you deserve someone, some system that recognizes you. So like I'm saying about the NHIF, correct me, or someone can correct us. Yeah. Um, it is so weird that w the immediately you stop working, it is with the drone. And that is the time you have aged, that's the time you have retired. Actually, you have to pay money. When, yes. When do you really need that insurance, medical insurance? Is it when you are young or when you have aged? Mm -hmm. So those are some of the things we need to look at. Uh. Look, you have, how many parents have you had even being killed by their own children getting to Kushukua Shambayao? We get this one. That one is a, like an everyday thing these days. How many old parents in their 80s, you go in the village, like I told you, I saw this while I was doing campaigns. I got the opportunity. That's why I cannot say, actually, I failed in my uh, seeking the election because I learned so many things I would not have done about my country. Okay. How many people, old people, you find rearing young kids which were left behind by their sons and daughters who went to no one knows they're raising their grandkids they are raising their grandkids they are not even able to some of them even died because of diseases and these are some of the things we need to talk we need to talk if it's aids cut it that it can do this it can leave your children often mm -hmm. these are the things we don't talk about things like sex in the country is never discussed openly yeah. we need to talk because these these things are inevitable Aging is inevitable. So as much as we try to run away thinking that as youth, oh, the youth should be given this, you'd be done. Yes, you'll be given. But even you, you will grow old. What have you prepared? What have you learned? What can you contribute to this? Which laws as a lawmaker, can you make sure that they are working there so that they work for whoever is old now? They can also work for you tomorrow. Tell me though, when you look, when you speak about parents being beaten, some being killed, which is so unfortunate by their children. But is it true? It's it's very true. Yes. I've seen in different parts of even here in countries. Yes. Uh, where would we put the blame? Because as much as it's a horrible vice, some would say it's 
It's probably the elderly that did raise their children well. If you raise your child well, they'll come love you later. Is that a, a good reasoning to look at some of the cases where the elderly are being abandoned and the children are like, you mistreated me, you didn't show me enough love, so it's your time to go through the suffering. What would you tell someone who probably has that kind of situation? Actually, uh, JDL, I don't think this has anything to do like there's anyone to blame. We cannot blame the youth, we cannot blame the, the parents either. Uh, today's life is very different from that used to be of our grandparents, not even our mothers, because even them, like us, they have raised us going to work. Now, money was introduced, so everyone is busy chasing. These children, some of them, they grow with the house helps. They don't even, even parents don't even know their children well. So that togetherness, that culture which used to be there, is not there anymore. And we are not anticipating it to come back because this is the way things are. So even if you are my son today and you move, like I have my daughter and daughter in the U.S., they are working there. If they were to take care of me and then they take me and keep me there in their house, yeah. which is not possible at my age. I'm still aging and, you know, I told you aging is a process. Yeah, a process. Anyone after since 30 you years born. since you were born, we are all <laughs> aging. And even if you, when you are aged, you still need to eat. So your son goes out there and gets married. He has his family. He's also chasing the wheat mm -hmm. to make his things eat meat. Then your daughter is there somewhere there. How do you have to blame that son? Okay. But now the question of coming to be at home, this land you should have given to, to us, mm. goes to Naona Iyo. They are being shambled. You want to near, you kill so that your parents can move even out of their own house. You yeah. take it. Not to blame. Again, I even, I think, uh, half where I can blame the system. Because the system is just messed, system up. Is just messed up. Tell mm -hmm. me though, when you look at caring, what is caring for you about the elderly? Some would say, I send my mom money maybe after every two weeks. My mom d does not lack anything. I've taken care of her rent, I've taken care of her food. My dad, I sometimes buy shopping for him online. They take it to his home. They buy suits for him, they take it. What does caring mean for you? Is this just financially or what does it really entail? Actually, that's part of it, but it's not 100%. The, I talked about one of the challenges being loneliness. And it's not your fault as a son or a daughter. Oh. It's not also your fault. Mm -hmm. It comes a time when you have what we call the nest. You are left alone. Especially for the single mothers or single fathers. Your kids have gone out to their lives. So the even nest. If, the nest, yes. So even if you send me money and I'm still lonely, there's a difference between being lonely and alone. You may not even be alone, but you're lonely. So there is loneliness that your son cannot be there to, to cover that loneliness. Your daughter cannot do that. Mm -hmm. So you are lonely, you miss your age mates. You know, like when you go to work, like mm -hmm. you go to work, we meet at work, we talk. The women groups, they go and talk. That kind of social networking is not there. Yeah. And actually it is affecting men more because you're working in Nairobi. Now you're very happy. You have all these youths, all these men, friends of yours. Yeah. You go drink with them, you go party with them. By the time you hit retirement age, you are 60, you go back now to the reserves. Those people who are there, they are not your friends. You never shared anything in common with them you become lonely. They don't even understand you and they don't want even to understand you. And they're you. used to the hype of And Nairobi. you're used to life of Nairobi. Yeah. You're used to high profile. You are a politician who used yeah. to be Moishimiwa. There is no Moishimiwa anymore. Yeah. Because what they forget, did I also retire? Remember Shikuku? Yes. Have you ever heard of Shikuku? Martin because Shikuku. you are young. Did you see how he died? Just a poor man in the village. The other day, there is a man called Demo. Uh, he was, uh, I think, PS or something. Yeah. He was talking about this loneliness. He went home immediately. You retire, you go home. All these people are in Amatiang and the rest. The following day, no one rings even your phone. So it's now not just about you are, the money. Not about the money. There you are now. You are ignoring the friends in the village. Will they be with you? How will you fit there?
So when I'm saying this in the West, what happens? They have what they call assisted homes. Mm. The government has a system of having homes. So when you retire, you can pay for this. Maybe uh, when I come, hey, here is my old friend. We taught with her. We were politicians together. We live in the same gate and community. Mm. So we have a pool. We can swim together. We can have a drink in the evening together. We can chat. You can go to your room, you can go to your room. So it's like another home. They are called actually homes. Yeah. So, and that one helps. That's why you see in the villages, the women who are in these chamas, they, they are never bored. They are not like the men. You know, the social life of men here is only drinking. Yes. You see? Yeah. But the women they meet, even that gossiping is very important. In the, <laughs> I remember my mom, eh? yeah. my real mom. Uh, she, every, at every, every end of every month, she's asking, oh, I've not paid for my chama. At some point, we ask her, what is this chama oh, now yeah. for? What's the benefit? She tells us, you might not see the benefit, but I see the benefit. So we give her money to be taken there, yeah. just to be there. And to talk and, and to, to chat, talk. And talk about their yeah. children. And to their, their children. Husbands, exactly, their husbands, if they have them and if they are, they are single, if yeah. they are widowed, yeah. they stay share. So that sharing is very, very important. Maybe, uh, maybe as we wrap up, uh, this is a new channel, obviously. What is, what is your hope for the near future in this channel? And what's, what can you tell people about this channel that you think is important to them and for their families and for the society as a whole uh, about the Lucy uh, Moria network? What I will tell people in this channel, uh, JDL, is that uh, this channel is for everybody. Mm. It's for the young, it's for the aging, it's for the aged, mm. it's for the retiring is for the retired. We'll be having a lot of professionals here to talk about health. We'll be having geriatrics yeah. professionals. We'll be having gynecologists to talk about women issues as they age. They are even this incontinence. Even people as they grow old, you hear they are peeing on themselves. Not that they want. Yeah. These issues are there, but they need to be prepared to avoid that depression. And you know, when you know something, you'll be prepared. We'll be having uh, like money planners will be having like the uh, equity bank will be working with them and they will be coming to advise people on that we will be having a nutritionist to tell them about food about the right way feeding about uh, talking about diseases like um, um, these lifestyle diseases because yeah. some of the things that are killing us slowly is about lifestyle diseases we will be discussing about everything so this is not about just the older people to listen or the aging people because i said aging everyone Age. is aging since you're born you you're need aging. to know what would happen yeah. to you what happens as you continue aging? Because you don't know, you are 20 now or 30. Yeah. You don't know what happens when you become 30, when you become 50, when you get married, when you have grandkids. What happens? When the, when the children leave. Exactly, when the children leave, yeah. you're in the nest, you need to know all this. So this channel will be actually articulating all this, uh, bringing experiences, bringing the challenges and discussing them, and also success stories because there are people who have returned and they have aggressively oh, yeah. there are people like you know, professor manure yeah, yeah. you see he's still teaching yeah. i'm not saying manure is old you should not hear me <laughs> but they are aging yeah and they are still doing something to build the nation yes. i'm telling you if you today you are told to become a political analyst you may have done poli yes. political science yes. at the university, but what Manura practically can discuss is not what you can discuss. So we need that to tap that wisdom and we need to learn. I'm not saying anyone should be discriminated. Everyone has, so long as your mind is sound yeah. we and still the government also will be addressing our, our country leaders mm -hmm. to take care, to come out with the policies that will protect these leaders. Well, maybe it's the right time to wrap up. It's getting windy here. But thank you so much. This is the Lucy Moria Network speaking about aging. We are aging as we grow every single day. We need someone to help us, someone to guide us. I think, Lucy, this, 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 this is a gift from God to the society that you have here. Until we do talk again, maybe I'll come back, maybe I won't, but I hope I do. Have yourself a lovely rest of your day. Please make sure you subscribe and share this video with as many people as possible so that everyone is reached out. Good day for you.